Now then, those of you who have been paying attention will have noticed that we've had a bit of a theme going on the channel recently about diverters and solar. Well, this is an extension of that, but we're talking about DC load dump. So we're diverting power away from the charge controller and putting it into a heater. So effectively, when the solar panels are switched off, we can transfer that power that is being wasted into a heater to provide useful work. Now we are on 48 volts so I'm going to go into the whole theory business a bit later on when we get into the workshop but just behind me here we've got a three element storage heater. Now normally the elements in these are 850 watts each but we can adjust that it's relatively simple so let's take the cover off and just have a brief look now I switched this off yesterday so therefore it won't be roasting hot in there and uh, it's quite a great gray day anyway so the charge controller wouldn't have been feeding any power to it and you know there's no wind or anything like that nothing to bring the voltage of the batteries right up. Now this has been here for a while so I'm just going to try and remember what's going on. Did I put any screws in the bottom there? No. Perfect. So there's all the control mechanism. And I think probably after we've had a look at this, we'll have a look at that. So we've got some screws here. One more. These storage heaters are really quite flimsy when you start taking them apart. They're just bits of pressed tin. Uh, we well, might have a right lot of mess coming out of here. So there's the bricks. Let's just ease one of these out and hopefully the rest won't. I bet you they will. Let's take that one out as well. Okay, and the rest. So it's quite a collection of bits and pieces in here. These two are elements out of immersion heaters. Three kilowatt immersion heater elements. Taken off the bosses and bent fit and this one here I'm not sure whether this is successful or not because I did do some of these and they burnt out as in they stopped working but that is an element out of a washing machine and there's another one there and I can't remember yeah they're wired in parallel the power comes up here into there and into there and it comes back down there and there and there with a bit of slate in there as an insulator. I'll sort that out. So you can see the theory. Effectively what we've done is change the elements so that they draw more current because what we're talking about here is putting something like 50 volts into that. We need to talk about the theory shortly and the quick way of working it out. Hopefully this makes sense at the moment and for those people who are not familiar with storage heaters let's just have a look right down here. Now that there is a standard storage heater element 
850 watts at 240 volts and as you can see it's got two pins sticking out of it and that fits into well, let's just see if we can one of those little blocks there and there should be another one there and another one further along but it's behind some of the bricks so as you can see it's relatively easy to change the elements for something that draws more power I think the main thing with this element is that those pins there are not part of the element so those pins don't get as hot as the element does I think that's an important bit because you don't want uh, something that's heating up within the connector even though it's a porcelain connector with brass inserts so that's the theory so far now again for the uninitiated let's just have a look at the control mechanisms so we've got two controls and as you can see virtually every second hand storage sheets you get the control knobs are missing so these are just a couple of lumps of ash with a little hole board down pushed onto the end of the control pin this one here opens that flap and I always keep them in the closed position because otherwise you lose a lot of heat straight away whereas really you want to keep the heat building up and this one is a thermostat and I always have it full because we're not putting anything near the the rated power into this one which would be 2.4 kilowatts then it won't get really really up to temperature but if you wanted to use this it's a thermostat what you'd have to do is put a DC capacitor of about 47 microfarads across those sets of contacts just wired directly across that way it will stop it arcing so I leave this one flat out so therefore the contacts won't open and I leave this one fully closed up so that little door doesn't open up okay we've got a lot to get through this is 850 watt standard storage heater element at 240 volts and it says so on here somewhere it's printed very faintly so I'm not going to uh, try and uh, show you it now then let's just take the resistance of this okay so we need to have something on there no you can't see that hopefully that's right this should be something like 70 ohms 71 let's call it 72 ohms okay right to the whiteboard okay just a basic bit of theory here that element was designed to run on 240 volts all right and it was 850 watts or it is 850 watts at that voltage so 850 divided by 240 wattage divided by voltage equals 3.54 amps that's the current that's how much current it draws so following on from that we have 240 volts divided by the current 3.54 okay and that equals 68 ohms 
and we measured it at 72. So that's pretty close for resistance. So ohms is resistance. Resistance is the value of a conductor that resists the flow of electricity. That'll do. Probably not entirely accurate, but it's close enough. Okay, so if we were to run that element at 50 volts, say, yeah, although with the system I use it's probably nearer 55, because we've got a 48 volt battery bank, and when you disconnect the battery bank from the solar panels, the voltage of the panels goes up, but the thing that you're putting it into, i.e., the storage heater is drawing current so it will keep the voltage down a bit but we're going to work on 50 volts anyway so following on from that 68 ohms so we've got 50 volts divided by 68 ohms equals O point seven four amps and if you multiply fifty volts by zero point seven four amps you get the watts which is thirty seven point eight so let's call it thirty eight watts that's not very much so we're going to have to do something about it and we're going to have to use an element that draws more current like these elements here which are immersion heater elements now there's a couple of things you need to know about immersion heater elements One of them being, the outer case can be two different uh, metals. Don't worry about the fact that this one's bent. It's actually the same length as that one, but bent up. But let's just see. That one's soft. So that's a coppery thing. This one, you can see it's a different colour. And it's very tough and you can't bend it. So for what I propose for this storage heater, you need the coppery type ones. Because as you've seen, when we're in the office, I've bent these to some weird and wonderful shapes. And you can anneal this. You can heat it up. Because between the element and this outer case, there is a powdery white substance, magnesium something or other. And um, so you can warm these up and it won't do any harm to the element, heat them up and soften them. In fact, when they're in the storage heater, I'm sure they must glow red hot because they soften up wonderfully. They, they anneal themselves, even though they don't immediately get plunged into cold water. And the reason why we have to bend everything is just basically to make it fit. That storage heater block and it's seven and a half inches or 190 mil top to bottom and that's the next one so the element has to fit in that slot which is about 15 mil or a little bit more than half an inch by six and a half inches or 165 mil. So two of those are laid like that. So I have to fit the element in there with the other bricks on top. So looking at this one, 
that is 15 and a half or 390 but that's right to the pins so if we were to warm the undo these nuts warm the boss up because that's soft soldered in there so you heat it up with a propane torch take that off and then those two bottom legs can do that and that gives you the right shape and it will fit then with these two pins you can bend them bend them the legs here to bring them in to go into that connector and this type let me just zoom in on that. You can see there, these are spot welded on. So basically you just need to grind those lumps of connectors off to leave a straight pin. And of course that's the sort of basic shape we're looking for. Anyway, let's take the resistance of this. Let's just see if we can see. I think we can. That might do. I'm guessing this will be something like 19 or 20 ohms. So we're set on the 200 ohm range. Twenty point five, that'll do. Twenty point five ohms. So we've got fifty volts divided by twenty point five ohms. Well that's gonna be nearly two, isn't it? which actually equals 2.4 and a little bit. So call it 2.4 amps. So therefore we've got 50 volts times 2.4 amps equals 120 watts. But we've got three of these elements. So we got 120 times 3 equals 360 watts. Now you're going 360 watts, it's hardly worth a hassle. So again, taking this idea a bit further, bright sunshine, really sunny day, uh, the panels that are connected to this particular charge controller are producing well, the battery is right up on voltage and the divert charger operates. So now the panel voltage goes up because it's disconnected from the batteries and now it's connected to the storage heater. So let's assume that the voltage stays at 60 volts. divided by the resistance and that equals 2.93 amps so 60 times 2.93 amps equals 175 watts and 3 times 175 watts equals 5 to 7 so an increase of 10 volts makes a significant difference to the heating effect. The other thing you've got to remember is this is power that you were throwing away. And from my experience, in the spring and the autumn, that storage heater in my office makes a real difference. 
it's heat for nothing theoretically. You've got to put the effort into building up this and that and making the stuff. But that's all part of the interest and the most important bit there is the fact that you're gaining skills. Yeah, and skills are invaluable. So, why did I have two washing machine elements in parallel? Well, it's this search for elements that fit and elements with, the, with a, a reasonable resistance. Just sort me wires out. Okay, so I can't remember what the resistance of these are. There we go. Twenty-seven. Call it twenty-seven point six. Call it twenty-eight. So two of those in parallel. The resistance would be half of that, half of 28. So that would be 14. So a pair of these would draw more current than an immersion eater element at 14 ohms. Answers to that in the questions. The next thing to talk about really, briefly, is how do we transfer the power to this storage heater? Right, I've put this on manual focus just to stop it, the camera leaping around like a mad thing. So what we've got, these are automotive relays. Now on this one, it's got four pins, power pins, coil pins. So in other words, I'm just trying to find the, uh, the contact, there's the contact. In other words, you put the power on and it switches on. Can you see that contact moving? Just down here. Okay, so... When there's no point power going to the coil, nothing's happening. Okay. So this one, as you see, has got five pins. And I wonder whether we can just zoom down on that. There are the contacts. I'm going to have to be real careful here. Okay, so that is connected to there, and then when this operates, it's connected to there. Okay, so the panels are charging through there to there. Okay, and then when the charge controller operates, it goes click, and so their panels are, char are moving the power from there to there. And of course that is connected to the storage heater. And these are changeover relays, automotive changeover relays. 30 to 40 amps. Okay. The charge controller, when we're up to voltage, it sends a signal to this relay. The relay pulls in and sends the power off to the storage heater. And when the battery voltage goes down or when uh, the charge controller has reached the end of its timed uh, sequence, then that drops back out again and uh, starts charging the battery again. Let's just go and have a look in the battery shed. So this is part of the charge controlling circuit. Okay. We've got the homemade one, the circuit for which is in the book. 
and then the VLC voltage operated timer relay either of those will put a 12 volt signal out and operate those relays now there's just one or two bits that we need to talk about with the relay just to protect everything and I think the thing to do is just to show it over here now this is work in progress as you understand so um, it's just the way it is I'm trying to find a screwdriver or something to do as a pointer but um, how about the arm off a pair of glasses okay what we've got here is we've got one of those relays yeah and the power comes up here and it goes through the set of contacts and it goes up there and we've got this capacitor across those contacts and this one is 47 microfarad so effectively what that does is that protects the contacts from burning okay and on the next one let's just zoom out a bit you'll see there's a, a capacitor there and there's also capacitors here those capacitors are across the the contacts that go to the storage heater and they're slightly more because of the effects you get from a resistance heater just stops the arcing in there I've done a video about um, suppressing the sparking or arcing on relay contacts um, hopefully I will put it, the link in the description there's one more thing that we need to uh, be aware of on here and it's probably easier to go back to the first one there's a little diode here okay and this is the the, the wire or the pair of wires that bring the signals the 12 volt signal from the charge controller to the coil of the relay so the relay operates that's fine but when the relay switched off because effectively something moves it creates an electromagnetic force within the coil of the relay and it sends power back down these two wires but the opposite polarity so we have a diode there and that's just one that I had and that diode is wired in backwards so that when you get the electromotive force coming backwards it's dead shorted through this diode but when in normal operation that diode is the wrong way round so nothing can flow from the positive to the negative okay hopefully that makes sense yeah they call them flywheel diodes as well I think all sorts of strange names for it but effectively what it does is prevents that high voltage coming back from the coil and going back into your circuits now so that's it really um, free heat in the office from power you were throwing away okay so earlier on I talked about an easy way of uh, working out how much current uh, an element will draw at a lower voltage now of course once you get this idea of using a multimeter and taking the um, the resistance in ohms yeah then you can put it on anything and you can work it out what's going on and if you're on a a fixed DC voltage like 24 volts you'll know what sort of um, resistance you're looking for in a heater yeah, or multiples thereof like for instance when I use those washing machine heaters but here's a real quick um, idea 3 kilowatt uh, which is what the immersion heaters are draws 13 amps 
at 240 volt. I'm actually the wrong side here, but never mind. So, if you half the voltage to 120, you'll half the current to 6.5. And if you half it again to 60 volt, yeah, that will be 3.25. It's very rough. Yeah? And if you half it again to 30 volts, yeah, that is 1.5 plus a quarter, half of that, so, so a 1.62 or something like that. Okay, so you know, 1.62 amps at 30 volts is something in the region of about 44 watts, that sort of region, as a brief guess. So that's just a real quick way of working it out. And, you know, on that 60 volts 3.25, we're not too far away from uh, what we worked out earlier on. 2.4. So there you go. The other thing is, and we're just going to come round on the bench again. Right, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was nichrome wire. That's resistance wire. And here's some. And the old fashioned, the really big old fashioned storage heaters, the great big cumbersome things that had uh, funny bricks in it with grooves up it, had this nichrome wire in it. And this is about 1.75 mil. So you could get some nichrome wire, of course, the thicker it is, the less resistance per meter. And you just have to balance it out. And you could get the right length of nichrome wire, bend it to shape so therefore it doesn't touch itself again. Yeah? And that can be used for a resistance heater. In fact, some of this wire is used as the load dump for uh, the turbine. It's a 25 amp load dump. And it's the next day, and I've just been repairing the uh, the boom tracker. So I've noticed that the charge controller's been working. So that's just this is just temporary wiring, you understand. So we're on DC volts, sixty four volts, sixty four point five volts. And we want DC current 9. So 9.1, hopefully you can see that. 9.1 amps at 64 volts. So this is going to warm up nicely. It's already starting to feel... Well, it's lost the chill from overnight, put it like that. And of course, it wasn't running yesterday, or the day before, because I was preparing for the video. Hopefully that makes sense. Catch up with you soon.